All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Late Night Shots Podcast, episode 94. We got Cal Poly's Adam Kemp here, so just tell me a little about yourself, man. Uh, my name's Adam Kemp. I wrestle for Cal Poly. I have wrestled for Fresno State. Um, I am going. I have two more years of eligibility left. Um, planning on taking both years. Uh, just came back from the NCAA tournament. Um, made it to the round of 32. Um, and had had a pretty good season, I'd say, but next next year's gonna be even better. So before we get into the rest of the podcast, we got a quick word from our sponsor. Uh, as everybody knows, we are sponsored by Body Art Nutrition. You can use the link in the description below and use code HWTN20 at checkout to save 20% off your order. All right, so let's get into it. Um, you know, first questions first. I think everybody has this, you know. Your dad's Lee Kemp, right? So mm-hmm. that obviously must be crazy growing up, you know. You have uh, a lot of guys whose dads were, like, huge figures in the wrestling sport. You know, you have David Carr, whose dad was crazy. You know, you have the Mondays, who, you yeah. know, obviously Kenny Monday is a legend in this sport. And then uh, mm-hmm. you probably have some more, obviously. So how has that really impacted you? Because, you know, you're in college right now. And somebody sees the last name Kemp, they're like, oh, Right. So how has that kind of impacted you so far? So I had to take it back to like the beginning. Uh, when I was 10 years old, I had a picture. I actually lived in California when I was 10. My dad lived in Illinois. I had a picture, a poster in my room of some guy and his eyes were like whited out. He was in, he was grabbing another dude's leg and there was a bunch of international flags, you know, all around the border. I'd see him on my wall and I thought he was like some comic book hero or something. And one day I asked my brother, because we shared a room, I was like, who is that? Like, what is that thing on the wall? And he's like, that's our dad. And I was like, that's our dad. Like, what is he doing? And he said, he's wrestling. You don't know who their dad's a wrestler? And I honestly didn't know what wrestling was. So that was like my, one of my, my earliest introductions to like what my dad's legacy is and, um, you know, the impact he's had on the sport was just that poster in my room because I, I didn't even know that was um, him. So and two, when he got me into the sport, it was funny because I didn't really want to wrestle. He actually paid me to wrestle my first my first year out. He paid me because I was like, I'm like a money driven dude. So and uh, I was not having it, man. Like I remember this one time uh, I told my dad, like, um, like I'm not going to wrestle. I put my foot down even after he paid me. I was like, I'm done. And he was about to make me get out on the highway, man. I swear. He was like, get out of the car. Like, you're wrestling. Yeah. So he, it's been, at first it was kind of tough because I didn't know if I had it in me. You know, I think in high school it's tough, especially when, you know, you, you start, like, you have a rough beginning, you're losing. And, you know, uh, when I started out, I wasn't good at all, really. I mean, I was really, really fresh. So, in high school, when I would take the mat, you're right, people would see the last name Kemp and they, you know, they start saying, oh man, like this, he's about to kill this kid, da, 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 his dad's Lee Kemp. And I'd hear that and walk on the mat, like, I have no idea what I'm about to do. Like, <laughs> I'm just here, you know? So um, that was that was tough, but I have so much pride in me that I just hate losing in any aspect of my life. So I really started to take it serious. And then I just wanted to wrestle in college. Um, but it, it was tough growing up, but I'm really appreciative to have his last name and to have him be a mentor and help me like, reach my goals. Uh, it's not as much pressure now. Yeah. Um, I was following him. I follow him on Instagram. One thing he really talked about there is like, you know, he posts like all these throwbacks of his wrestling career, you know, it's always fun looking back at those matches. But one thing he said is that when he started wrestling, like, his biggest thing was how much improvement he made from year to year, which essentially mm-hmm. got him to where he was. Cause you know, that match where he knocked off Dan Gable when he was 18 years old, right? Like three mm-hmm. years before that, he's like, I was nothing but an average wrestler. You know, is mm-hmm. that something you kind of look at like in yourself? Cause you said you started like right there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to brag on myself a little bit. I have this unique ability to, to grow, I, I have a really optimistic mindset. Even like like we were talking about before, um, 
I buy and sell things. I buy and sell cars, like even exotic cars now. So the first car I ever bought, I paid a lot of money and I lost a lot of money on that car, but I didn't flinch because I, you know, it's part of it. And I learned from wrestling that sometimes you got to get your ass kicked a few times just, you know, to learn. And um, I have the same mentality with wrestling. I know next year it's going to be a different story. You know, I, I made a lot of growth. Um, I wasn't even ranked uh, the year before this year. And then I got to be in the top 10 this year. So and make it down to nationals and make it to the second day. So yeah, I, I think my dad instilled in me that, you know, you can be someone that has not gotten the results yet and have a totally different, you know, uh, outcome even months later. It's just some people have that ability and I believe I'm one of those people. He was definitely one of those people too. Going into college, like how good were you like the senior of high school and what did your college recruiting process look like? Okay. Uh, this is actually really funny. I have some really funny stories in, in this. Yeah. So uh, going into my senior year of high school, well, first off, uh, freshman year, I was on the J or the freshman team. Sophomore year, I was on like the J, JV team. In the beginning of junior year, I started out on the GV, JV wrestling team and I made it to varsity like mid, midway through the year. And then um, then I qualified for state that same year. And I think I made it to the match, like the blood run match and lost. And that gave me like a ton of motivation for like the next year. Um, but there was, all, there was always one guy in particular that would always beat me. And my neck, the following year, it came down to place that I had to beat this kid that had literally just beaten me, uh, uh, like at sectionals or whatever to get to state. He beat me bad too, but I literally thought that it was gonna be my last high, like time wrestling ever. I didn't think I was gonna get recruited anywhere. I didn't think that um, there was any next step for me because that, because this kid already beat me. So I just thought I was just gonna go out there give my best go and I did and I beat him uh, by a point and I took fifth and also in that same turn I had beaten the state runner up so um my dad actually reached out to Fresno State <laughs> he thought that gave me like enough street cred to reach out to Fresno State and they offered me a half and I went out there and um but then when Fresno State dropped their wrestling program I um, I was actually looking at a few different schools. I, I was actually applying to Illinois. Um, I'll let you, I'll let you ask that question later though, if you want. It's a long, kind of long story, but it's no, funny. You can, you, yeah, you can continue if you want. Okay. Uh, so when, when Fresno State draw the wrestling program, I was looking at a few different schools. Um, I was interested in Illinois, um, but I really was interested in Cal Poly too. My dad reached out to call Cal Poly and they they weren't really interested because they saw me as a, uh, an out-of-state kid. So my friend has had his birthday in Las Vegas after Fresno State dropped the wrestling program. And me and my friend Lawrence Sines went down to uh, Las Vegas to for my friend's birthday party. And Cal Poly was recruiting Lawrence at the time. So Lawrence had his um, like interview with the head coach while we were down in Las Vegas. So before we got in the call, Lawrence told me, he was like, hey, I don't want to tell, you know, John that we're in Las Vegas right now. So I'm just gonna stay at your dad's house in Sacramento. <laughs> so he tells John like, hey, like they get on the call. He tells John, like John asks him, hey, where are you? And he says, I'm at Adam's dad's house in Sacramento. And John said, um, oh, we didn't know that Adam's dad lived in California. We thought he lived in Illinois. Because, and that would make Adam an out-of-state guy, but since Adam's in-state, you know, we can afford an in-state guy, so we'll actually, like, hit him up, and uh, it's just funny, because if Lawrence didn't lie, like, I might not even be at Cal right now, because they, you know, they thought my dad was out-of-state, and they'd have to pay, pay out-of-state tuition, so that's kind of cool, that was kind of funny, but, um, but yeah, that's that story. Did the, so, did the coaches know now that they that that was a big lie that they that your uh, friend had said or 
Oh, like you said, do they know now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, we 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 laughed about it because it's funny. Uh, but yeah, they know now. <laughs> so being on a team with you know Evan Wake, who's a transfer from Wisconsin, he's been mm-hmm. one of the best wrestlers in the country his entire career. Bernie Trox at 184 is a I think a multiple time All American now. You know, what is it like? You know, Cal Poly is an up and coming mm-hmm. program right now. I think they probably have some big recruits. Wrestling's big in California. I think having a D1 program there is going to make things very interesting for that. Man, having Bernie and Evan in the room is something that is like a dream come true for me. I, I love competition. I, during this season, I like, I wanted to go with Evan every day. Like, I just, I was going up to him, hey, Evan, like, can we, can we go? And the thing about Evan is like, he he's such a down-to-earth dude like he's such a great guy so he helped me out so much throughout the year and we went we went live a ton he taught me a ton uh yeah having him in the he was just such a great addition to the program and he's gonna stay and coach so i'm really gonna utilize him i already told him like hey like you're gonna get tired of me straight up like watching him just go out and like dominate dudes like bro like i that's the guy that i want to learn from his pace, his hand fighting, everything about him is just great. He's a great dude. So it, it, it impacted the program just in every possible, such a good dude. And it, uh, it made everyone on the team just want to be more gritty, want to go out and dominate more and pick up their pace more, pick up their hand fighting more and kind of like um, emulate him a little bit. Yeah. So it's been great. You know, you wrestle, I think, 174. You plan on staying at that weight class, I might assume. So, yeah. you know, I think it makes it better that these guys, you know, Evan down to 165, Bernie up 184, you know, it's right in the middle. Like, subsequently, you're going to, you know, you're going to become one of them at that point, right? Yeah. So, yeah. this year, you, you, had, you had a solid season. You know, you came out of transfer. So, like, things weren't looking good your way in general. For guys, like, I want to say you, Kyle Parco, and A.J. Mm-hmm. Nevels, but, you know, I think your guys all made the best of it. So how did that, the news of Fresno State dropping their program really affect you? Because I know unlike Stanford, like we weren't able to help you guys. Mm. When that happened, man, it was, I remember the day that I heard news that Fresno State was dropping their program. I was just scrolling through Twitter and I saw someone tweet. They said, like OMG, is Fresno State dropping their program? I was like, no, they're not. Like, I was just at practice the other day. Like, I kept scrolling and then um, I kept seeing more tweets like, like, no, at Fresno State, stuff like that. And I was like, dude. And I came out of my dorm and uh, I was rooming with Lawrence. And I was like, Lawrence, like, what's going on? And we called our coach and he said, like, you know, we're fighting for it. And, uh, but it, what's really interesting and, uh, my, Lawrence knows this, my roommate, is uh, a few days before it happened, I had no idea like this was going to happen, but I felt like I felt like I wasn't going to be wrestling there for much longer for some reason. Like I wasn't going to answer the transfer report or anything, but I just kept imagining myself somewhere else for some odd reason. I, I really liked wrestling for Fresno, but it's just weird how um, stuff works because in my mind, I kept kind of picturing myself another single and I couldn't shake it besides the point but um it was when it happened it was really tough because i didn't know if i was even going to keep wrestling because i don't know it just seemed like such a bad thing i'd sacrificed so much to even just leave illinois and move out to california just because um i don't really have family cemented in one place like more, most a lot of people have complete people that like, like they can like go back home to that's just really not the case for me so i should not know what i was gonna do next um it was tough it was tough i just totally blindsided everybody um but it worked out in the end yeah uh are you good friends with uh you know the guys in fresno state still like kyle parko and i'm good friends with kyle kyle parko um not everybody i wouldn't say i was good friends with everybody but um just because you know i i'm i'm much better friends with people on this team i think um 
I don't know. Fresno State was just, is an interesting, you know, some guys from uh, some schools didn't like each other and there's a certain things going on, different things mixing within the team and animosity sometimes, but I guess a lot of teams have that, but um, I wouldn't say I'm friends with everybody uh, from Fresno State, um, but me and Kyle are cool. I'm cool with some people on the team still. Um, yeah. So, you know, this year's national tournament, like, you know, you made it, which is obviously the most important thing, right? Um, I want to say you won your first match. Yeah. And you yeah. had a Storachi round too. So, yeah. you know, being able to wrestle, you know, a guy who might go down as the only ever five-time national champion, like, how do you go about that? Like, what's going through your head? Warming up for that match, honestly, I – I was really motivated, man. I really wanted to wrestle him. Um, a few things I can I can say about that match is his pace is phenomenal. Um, he marches forward. It was really uh, – he made it tough to get through his hands, his, his head and hands defense because he's marching you forward. So after the match, I had a lot of um, notes. And I'll say I, like, I felt really motivated. I want to wrestle him again next year. So – um yeah that was those are the matches i i really like actually i have no nerves going to those matches i don't shy away from those matches um i love that um because it, it really exposes where you are you know it exposes where you are it exposes your deficiencies and it gives you something to look forward to it's a measuring stick so yeah i want i want that match again What's your mindset going into this? Like, what's your kind of like game plan? Because I know, say, if I'm going into a match against Gibble Stevenson, right, mm -hmm. I know I can't beat the dude straight up. Like, as much as I want to say I could, but, like, but there's always a chance maybe I catch a throw out of somewhere and somehow stick the dude, right? When you're going mm -hmm. into these matches, is that always in the back of your head or are you just like, hey, I can just straight up out wrestle this dude? Believe it or not, I, I believe I can straight out straight up by wrestle certain people just because I, I do it I do it in the room. Uh, you know, I I don't I hate to say it, but I've been for a large portion of my life like a big practice room wrestler. Um, I do very well against almost anyone you put me against in, in the room. My dad's told me that like my whole life. He'd tell me, Oh, like if you were in, you know, if you were in the room, you'd beat that kid. I'm sure, I'm sure like other dads that their sons, but I've been presented with the unique opportunity to wrestle some of those names that my dad would say, like, if you, you know, if you got in the room, you beat that guy. And I'd beat people resound like, you know, soundly in the, in the room. It's just transferring that out onto the mat is um, something I still struggle with. Cause I still maybe see myself as um, the high school wrestler that was losing and was on the freshman team. And, you know, I carry those losses with me. And I think, I've talked to another, like a lot of younger high school wrestlers where, you know, when they lose, it's hard to, for them to shake that off and keep seeing themselves as someone that can come out and dominate or someone that can come out and have a great match, you know, and that's something I definitely struggle with. Like I talk to, I talk to guys that have done it and to have made that next level about that and, ha and trying to see how they have dealt with that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I'm good enough to, to go out and you know translate that what I do in the room into actual matches it's just something that I'm really going to try to focus on next year yeah, so your team had a whole at nationals I want to say two all-americans yeah two with uh Evan Wick and uh Bernie Tracks what would you think of it like the whole tournament overall was this your first second tournament I want to say it's my first tournament first tournament. It's my first tournament and watching them I told my coaches watching them all American is like it just meant so much to me. I mean, you, you get to see how much how hard those guys work in the room. Yeah. You get to see it pay off. And just seeing that motivated me so much. Like I told my coach, like I'm it's happening next year. It's happening. It's I promised him like it's happening. Um, because I'm gonna put in all everything that needs to, you know, be done. I'm gonna put in the hours, I'm gonna work, uh, listen, I'm gonna watch video and I'm gonna make it happen. But it really starts with, you know, seeing people on your team and seeing what they do, you know, modeling what they do. And um, 
yeah the tournament as a whole the the energy in there is so contagious and the first time i walked out on the mat it was a little it was, it was a little overwhelming at first because i was like whoa like this is i've never been in a, you know stadium that big wrestling in front of all those people so that was really cool um but yeah it's a contagious atmosphere for sure yeah i want to say cklv was your first major tournament you went to yeah, I think you had a big win over Chris Foca of Cornell mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So, you know, that's so, you know, maybe not like the tier one win just yet. You know, yeah. I think Foca's young. He's going to get to that level. But, yeah. you know, it's still a big win. So like, mm -hmm. what was it like wrestling at your first college tournament? It was it was really cool. Um, it was. I've noticed my mindset change a little bit it was cool to go up a weight class and be able to not feel as like i didn't have to really cut weight at all i didn't have to do a lot of that so i really just had to focus on my performance um so it made the tournament more fun really to not have to like be running and cutting weight and doing all this extra stuff um it was just really fun it was freeing i i injury defaulted out of, out of uh, the semis after the semis but um yeah it was it was fun i did deal with getting surgery soon it's, it's kind of sucks but um yeah it's, it was exactly, a good tournament what exactly is the surgery for so i <laughs> it's so dumb so i uh right around the southern scuffle i climbed like 680 flights of stairs uh, on a stair stepper i was watching the whole southern, i was watching the southern scuffle with the weight vest on just like music blasting i was just going on the stair stepper just going 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 and i must have been on there for like an hour and 30 minutes just had it like on like level nine just going and when i got off i had torn my meniscus i had patella tendonitis i had a bursa sac in my knee, and this, the cyst came from um, the bursa sac, or not the bursa sac, it's a baker's cyst. And that cyst came from like tearing a bunch of stuff in my knee, and my knee was creating all this fluid to lubricate the joint. So it wouldn't be like bone on bone, and it just created this huge cyst. So yeah, I jacked myself up, yeah. just overworked my body. You kind of just like numb at that point. Yeah, I. I, I really I work out till failure. It's a bad habit, maybe, yeah. but I I work out so like I physically can't lift the weight anymore. And I do that with um everything I do. So um there's times I overdo it. Like I earlier in the season I was doing dips and I was doing so much chest and just getting after it and um I like screwed up my shoulder. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Um so yeah, I gotta I gotta chill a little bit on that. But <laughs> Everyone says I'm like really, really strong when they wrestle me. It's just because I, I, I work out to where I just can't physically keep going. It's just yeah. trying to tell, you, tell your body says no. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your body says no. no. Like fuck you. <laughs> That's insane. Like that you injure yourself like that on a stair stepper. Like it's like you hear all these guys like a practice. You just too much stair stepper. But um, no. you know. This year for you is obviously probably, you know, one of your biggest years of your career. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure uh, your dad was proud of where you're, you know, how, how your success has gone so far. But, you know, like you said, there's a lot more for you to obtain. You know, you have a whole nother two, two seasons left with Cal Poly. So what is your team looking like in the future? Do you think you guys are, are going to become one of those top dog teams with, you know, the guys you have in the room now and then the recruits coming in? <laughs> For sure, for sure. We got we got Luca Wick, um, we got Luca Wick, we got Legend Lamer, we got Lawrence Signs. We'll have uh, Bernie back. Two more seasons. We got uh, Antonio Antonio Lorenzo. We just have so much so much talent on our team, and so much um, potential. I think a lot of teams have potential, but we are the team that I think just has been jumping levels a lot, even before Evan got here uh and now we have the addition of him on the coaching staff and yeah we're gonna 
I want to say we're going to surprise a lot of people, but I think people are starting to notice. So I don't think there'll be much of a surprise, but I think next year will honestly be our best year yet. Luca Wicks bench press. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's nuts. So, Isn't that nuts? Yeah. Crazy. I've, was, seen, uh, I've seen it. Yeah. I don't even know. I just I just had to bring that up. What did he bench? I have like, like four or something. Man, seeing it in person is crazy. Like what how much does he weigh? Like 160, probably. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It's crazy. Yeah, I was scrolling through his Instagram one day. I'm like, yo, maybe this dude's kind of strong. I'm like, he's having with his brother. So I followed him. Look at the video. I'm like, yeah, when you bench max, but it's like from the side, the starting off. So yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe he hit like 225, 315 or something. Like even 315 would have been kind of crazy. And then turns mm-hmm. to the side and I start seeing four plates. And I'm just like, and he hit it for two also. And like didn't bounce it, or anything. I'm just like, what? It's such a, a contrast from him and his brother too. Because Evan doesn't lift that much. And honestly, he doesn't, like he doesn't lift that much weight and he doesn't lift that often either. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. But Evan still feels really strong. Like, he honestly, like he doesn't, like he honestly does not lift much weight. But when you wrestle him, he feels like he'll snap the shit out of you. Like he'll put your head in the mat. But yeah. he doesn't lift that much weight. But yeah. yeah. But, I feel like there's that difference. There's there's the difference of like lifting strength and then you know wrestling strength. Like the weight, the weight proportion and the way the weight moves is just completely, completely different. Because you know a lot you hear that a lot. A lot of these top level guys don't really lift. They just yeah. wrestle, and they and when they wrestle, they wrestle strong. So I don't know. It's it, it. I guess it just all depends on personal preference because. There's a lot of wrestlers that do get in the gym and lift weights quite often. But I guess it's just, you know, just a preference. I think like, they're both they're both like in that like so they're like anomalies because Evan barely even cuts weight. Like he doesn't even cut that much weight. It's surprising. He walks around like 170, but he looks gigantic and it's, but he feels so strong and it's just crazy. So, yeah, it's cool. So a uh, big one, um, you know, with the more eyes on the sport, you getting into the college level, of course, eyes are going to be on you. It's not high school anymore where, like, kids will just see you at a tournament. It's like they see your name in the bracket versus Starachi. They're like, oh, this dude might give him a run for his money, you know. Going back to what I said before, you know, with all your dads accomplished in college and on the senior level, you know, and you've seen like the fast growth yourself. Like, where does that motivate you to like, where you could be? Like, time come. Um, uh, you're asking like a uh, QB for Q asking more time. Sorry, uh, I don't even know. How, I'm trying to rephrase this correctly. I'm not even sure what I'm trying to ask, but you know, like, what you're like, what are your aspirations like in this sport? Essentially, I believe I believe that I can. I'm gonna tell you. I told uh, John Cyrus when he's uh, recruiting me. I told him that I know that I can all American. I know that in these next two years, I can all American. It wouldn't be easy, but I know at the very least that is what I'll, what I'll take for my co- college career. Winning it is gonna take. It's gonna take like. Um, it's gonna take a lot. I know I can all American, but there's a big jump between qualifier and all-american but there's even a bigger jump between all-american and uh national champion so my goal is honestly to national ch- to be a national champion next next two years it, but um i know a lot of people will be happy and proud of me if i all-american but that's just i just want the best in every area of my life so uh, that's my goal I, I i know these next two years i can get on the podium i know i probably will but I want to win it. I really want to win it. So, and my dad tells me I can win it. My training partners tell me that they believe that I can be a national champion. My coaches tell me it. Uh, so that's where a lot of the belief comes from when, you know, I, I've had bad losses. Uh, I've lost to people I probably shouldn't have. Um, I've not had good matches, but it's working towards something. It's working towards something. I plan on surprising a lot of people, so. I think the biggest thing, like, once you get to this level is your confidence, you know. 
And next year, you know, I think you – I've watched you wrestle a good amount. I think you can very well get on that podium. And I think you can do it pretty easily and get decently high up there, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, obviously you have the guys like the Sirachi and the Kyle Lewis yeah. who I think, you know, honestly, you could put your name in that conversation, right? Because yeah. – it's not like they're that far ahead if you like they're good mm-hmm. and you're about the same age, you know, it's, it's possible. But once you get the all American, you see so many guys like get this new built up confidence that like before there were doubts on them, there may be a couple of bad losses, but now it's like you are one of those guys, right? Yeah. yeah. And you're not far off from national champ, like maybe a little bit of some weight classes, but like 74 yeah. it's stacked all the way. If you make, the number eight guy could very well win it one day. Yeah. Yeah. That's the goal. I um that's the goal, man. I mean, I think you even you even proved a lot of people, you know, that you belonged in you know, in, in the in the scene and in the collegiate wrestling scene when you went from the 30, you went from what 31st ranked to number 10 in the country. Like yeah. seemingly yeah. overnight, you were all of a sudden you were top 10 in the country. You know, this kid from Cal Poly who, you know, you know, nobody really heard of that much to all of a sudden being a top 10 guy, you know, that had to kind of, you know, make you feel like, you know, you made the right decision going to Cal Poly, you know, that it was for, you know, for a right, right decision to go. You know, what's interesting about that and something that I'd never expected there. My coach said this to me, he was like, he told me that I was used to being the, um, the hunter and not the hunted it's true it's like and i've even talked to evan about this it's like when you get to be ranked that high it's like you you're not really hunting anymore i mean you you are but you're not, you're not really seeing many guys ranked above you at that point you're kind of the one that's hunted like everyone's wrestling you like they're trying their best um it was different it was different because i've never like coming in out of high school i wasn't even close to being ranked coming out of high school or anything in the nation. So it was such a new experience. And then two, I, so I thought, you know, my take was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work my ass off. I'm gonna, you know, work even harder than I was working before. And then I end up, then I end up injuring myself being dumb, you know? So then I have to defend, you know, I feel like I had to defend my ranking, you know, I was injured and it was just such a new thing to go up that high and to see that. And to realize now that like ranking shouldn't matter, even if you are ranked that high, you still gotta wrestle. Um, you're gonna feel a little bit more hunted, but you just gotta go out and wrestle at the end of the day and forget your ranking. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what was that like for you? You know, we hear a lot about um injured guys wrestling. You know, you saw a lot of the Iowa guys at nationals were beat up and torn apart and Spencer Lee last year won it with two torn ACLs. So what was that like for you, you know, with with how much damage was done to that knee? What was that like competing, you know, and continuing to try to defend that, you know, your ranking and, you know, what was that like for you? It was tough. It was really tough. Uh, The toughest part isn't the, for me at least, it wasn't the, the physical like ailment. It was my mind telling me like, hey, like, your body's messed up. Like this guy, he's probably fine. He's probably fresh. Like, you know, he's the advantage uh, over you before you step on the mat. This is what my mind was telling me, you know, like you're not going to be as explosive. You're not going to be as fast. You know, you're not going to be as strong. Um, I've been used to lifting like all my life. I couldn't squat, couldn't run, couldn't jump. So it was, it was different. It was, um, I have like a lot of respect for guys, you know, from Iowa that, were dinged up that still you know went out to you know handle business because it's tough it's like you have to handle the injury but you also have to handle your mind telling you that um that you're not as good as you were because you're injured and you you had you you know like four weeks before the NCAA tournament I got a uh, MRI I actually got two PRP shots in my knee Uh, I got one before Pac-12s and I got another one before nationals but the second time I got the PRP shot my my doctor he was like hey can I be honest with you I was like yeah he was like I have no idea how you're wrestling right now like your meniscus is torn from edge to edge and 
he was like, um, he just said that he had like a lot of respect for me. And that meant a lot. Uh, Cause I wasn't thinking like that. I wasn't thinking like, man, you're a warrior, you're wrestling when you're injured. I was just thinking, man, like, you know, you're injured and these guys have advantage over you. So I should have been thinking to give myself props maybe. I think this is, uh, I mean, not really related to what you just said, but like going back to the whole Evan Wick thing, mm-hmm. you know, the whole Alex Marinelli rivalry, mm-hmm. you know, maybe things didn't end up the way he wanted to, but I think being able to get the last win over Marinelli is definitely something that he said stuff about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, he came up short the last few times. I think he won 16 to three the first time they wrestled then mm-hmm. 10 to four in this match. So what's it like watching one of those? I was telling everyone on our team, like that was the most, that was, that was the match I was most excited to watch because I remember being at Midlands watching them like battle and it just seems so iconic. Cause you here, you have this guy that is so long, lanky and tall and Marinelli's like, you know, obviously shorter, stockier has a different style. So there's just such a clash of body types and styles. So I really like watching it. And it meant so much to Evan to go out and, you know, dominate him. Um, it meant a lot because like, like you said, if they'd had the, they, they've had this, um, you know, this, I don't want to say rivalry, but this rivalry, you know? Yeah. So um, yeah, it was really cool. It was cool to watch. It was my, personally, that was my favorite match of the tournament. Yeah. So then go out and do that because I know it meant a lot to him. Yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite like non-finals matches too. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh... I know. I think even when when we talked to Evan when he was at Wisconsin, he even mentioned you know him wrestling against Marinelli and stuff. Yeah, man. It's... And that was that was like one of his like favorite competitions was him and Marinelli just getting after it. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's. In practice, I was I remember we were going at it one time, and I was really really heavy on Evan's head, and Evan used his own arm to like rest his head on his own arm to like take the pressure off my collar tie, and he said that he um, developed that technique because of Marinelli like putting so much pressure on his damn head. And it's just funny that he even had that because now I do it sometimes. So yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. So I mean. Okay. Yeah, so what's one guy you're looking forward to wrestling the most next season and why? Starachi. Definitely Starachi. Um, I'm looking forward to because, honestly, he's not – because his style is kind of simple. And I – but simple, but it's really masterful in the same way because he's driving forward, he's putting a lot of pressure on you. But – uh, his shots to me aren't anything special. It's just his pressure and his pace that um, I think give him a really big advantage over his opponents. Um, so I'm excited to wrestle. I think if I could keep at his pace and not get tired, he tired a lot of people out of the tournament. Um, I think it'd be a much better match. And two, it just it's just gonna keep being a measuring stick. Honestly, I'm really excited to wrestle that guy again. Because he's the best. I'm also the best. Yeah. I'm watching him wrestle through a tournament. His the fact that he can keep the pace that he does for as many yeah. matches in a row as he does, mm-hmm. probably one of the most impressive things I've seen from any of these college wrestlers. I was listening yeah. to a Jordan Burroughs interview where he said if there was one guy that he's scared of taking the spot before 2024, it'd be Sirachi. So I heard him say that. I heard him say that. That was Best freestyle, I think his style will be really good. Yeah. Style. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, we like to uh, wrap it up with some fun non-wrestling questions. Uh, I'll start this one off. Um, You know, I think before nationals, we're just doing national picks. So 2023 NCAA picks is what we're doing. Just like a year too early, I guess. Okay. Shoot, I don't even know who's back. But is is Spencer gonna wrestle? Uh, you know? probably. As we know of, yes. Yes. So I'm definitely gonna do him okay. first. Uh, 
33. If Roman Roman comes back, I'd do Roman. I don't think he is. I don't think I he is. Back? I don't really? Think so. I, Fix got to win one, though. That's the thing. Is Fix Fix right? Six is, was only a sophomore this year. Dayton Fix? Yep, six yeah. year. Six what? year sophomore. Listen, tell him about your idea. He okay. Could, he, he could have nine years of college wrestling. Okay. So he's a, he was a sixth year this year. He goes into seventh year as a junior. Say he loses. Eighth year, he could take an Olympic red shirt. And then ninth year, he can come back as a senior. Oh, my gosh, dude. I'm not yeah. sure if you're not allowed to take that many, if the Olympic red shirt is still applicable. But if it is, he could be here for nine years. That's nuts. Dude. Well, definitely him for 33. Or no, 41, 41. Uh, Fix that 33. Fix that 33. Yeah. 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 Nick Lee's coming back. I definitely see it. I was actually really impressed by well. him. He's Nick done as well. He took, he took four. He took four straight. He wrestled true freshman year all the way through. Wow, that's one guy. Like watching him wrestle, I was really really impressed. His shots yeah. looked really good. Yeah. They were crazy. Forty one is going to be probably one of the more open weight classes. No Ironman. No Nick Lee. Yeah, I don't. I, I got real woods. <clears throat> That might be coming out of nowhere. I don't know. Oh, I like uh, what's his name, Composto from Penn, also. Yeah, because he's uh, young. Shoot, is uh, see that? No, see that's had his last year. I think. Yeah, like all the top dogs are gone. You're right. I'll go. I'll go with real too. Real, real woods. Uh, Fifty-seven. I go with car. Okay. Go with car. Um, Solid. 65. 65. Oh, Keegan. I go with Keegan yeah. for sure. Yeah. Over Shane? Yeah. Solid. I, I, I like Shane. Shane, though, he's he's cool, but I mean, that, that's going to be a good. And obviously, it's going to be a good draft for them every year. 74. I'm going to go with. Hmm. Should shoot myself in the foot, aren't I? You could pick yourself. I'm not gonna be mad. All right, hey, yeah. you do it. I think everybody we've had on so far has picked themselves. I'm pick myself. Hey, that's what it, let's, let's hope this. Let's hope this ages well. <laughs> uh, 84. I'm going with Bernie. Honestly, I truly believe Bernie can win it. Hey, we're we're talking to Bernie next week, so we'll. Then, yeah. Tell me I said that. I really think that guy can win it. Um, we will. 97. Uh, I'm going to go with Ferrari when he comes back. I'm going to go with AJ. Yeah, that, that's solid. solid. Yeah. Or, I think Buchanan can give him a solid run still. I might be going a little so. too much, but I think he's the only guy who has the same neutral game that can match him. What about what about Dean? He's yeah. coming I back. think Dean kind of gets exposed at neutral. That's the problem. Mm, and okay. I, I think AJ is too much of an athlete to get ridden on top. Mm. You guys know who uh, Paris lost to at that tournament? Uh, Colton Schultz. He lost him? Okay. And uh, he lost uh, – he got he got mauled by Kirk Lee. He was bad. Damn. I think Kirk Lee – Kirk Lee's my pick for heavyweight next year. I think he's – That's how I'm going to pick, too. That's how I'm going to pick, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a good good dude. All right. Yeah. Well, we are heavyweight nation, so of course, uh, all the fat people watching this are going to want to know food related questions. So, uh, <laughs> go to eating spot in Cal Poly, California. What's the go to spot? You and the team going out to eat. Where are you going? All right, you're not going to like this answer, but the food over here is really not that good, man. I got to be honest. Um, not the in and out. Shoot, it's not even an in ounce though. No, no, bro. It's the the food on the central coast is honestly not that good, but we got a lot of stuff to make up for it. But shoot, I go to I love a good burger. I I get um I get an egg on my burger, egg, bacon, pepper jack cheese, uh, onions. I like burgers, so I, I go to Cool Cat Slow. Uh, that's a good burger place or um, Burger Village. Yeah. Those are my All two. Right. My two I picks. got a big one. What do you dip your fries in? I'm a big barbecue guy. I like barbecue. Okay. But 
Spice. Yeah. What's a, what's a, what do you dip your fries in? Well, you know, I, I do a bunch of different stuff. I'm kind of stuck in college right now, so we just take a bunch of packets and mix them together. Okay, okay. I see you. You got to experiment, you know? Yeah, yeah. A, big, a big ranch guy. Yeah, kind ranch? of stuck with the ketchup here, but, you know. Big, big ranch not. guy. Do you guys go to the same school? Uh, no. no, we're like two hours. We go away. to we actually go to rivalry schools. So he his his wrestling team wrestles in the same conference as mine. So yeah, we could we could eventually see each other in a duel. Yeah. What schools do you go to? I go to East Stroudsburg University. It's a small school in uh, northeast P, northeast PA. Okay. Okay. I go to I'll Shippensburg. Okay. Okay. Cool. There you go. So you guys got like a rivalry going on, kind of. I don't know about that, that, but there could be a duel where me and him both right weigh in and we have to wrestle each other in the division two college duel. He so, doesn't want that. He doesn't okay. want it. It's gonna be a tag. Me. Um, it depends where it's at. If it was at I'm, his I'm not no, no, no. I, <laughs> don't don't don't, don't, don't gym tell yourself full this. of students. Gym full of students, I'm rallying behind the crowd. Yeah, I'm turning them on top and get the stick. <laughs> Derek, I'll be respectful if you didn't talk shit, but now that you're doing it, I might have to post it after I tech you. We'll I don't know, man. We'll see. I love it. Okay. I love it. Uh, there's there's so much banter. It, this this is why I love doing this. We have so much fun. We have so much yeah. banter with each other. It's great. It's yeah. it's great. It's good. But um, one final question. We ask this to every single guest since. Okay. For a long back now, many episodes. Um, zombie apocalypse happens. You could choose four of your, your teammates to create the survival super squad. So who are they? And a quick re- quick reason why e- you choose each one of them. Okay. First, Legend Lamer, because that kid is really competitive. And I I love his competitive spirit. So I know that he would just not die easily because uh, he's so competitive i choose definitely evan because he he's good at thinking on his feet thinking quick and he's also really competitive definitely bernie just because he's got that competitive nature uh who else who else who else i choose and then probably uh lawrence sign just because he's funny he keep everyone like laughing and in that dark time, it'd, it'd be important to to laugh a little bit. Yeah, that'd be my four for sure. It's all it takes, man. Um, it was a pleasure getting to talk to you. You know, we look forward to watching you compete this uh, two two uh, next two upcoming seasons. So uh, yeah. we hope to have you back on and you all American. You know, get that big Starachi upset. You know, Thanks, we, we, we'll be be excited to have you back on. So yeah, we appreciate uh, yeah. you giving us your time. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thank you for coming on. So this has been episode 94 of Late Night Shots, and we see you guys again next time.